Okay, so let's let's switch topics. Um, I want to talk about omega three, and this is a topic that's very I'm. It's very important to me, and I'm really obsessed with it. Like um, the the uh, person that introduced me mentioned that I am a associate scientist at the Fatty Acid Research Institute that was established by Dr. Bill Harris, and I'm involved with research, particularly looking at how omega three fatty acids affect the brain. But I think it's really, really important uh, to talk about because most people are not eating seafood or fish. I mean, it's like 90% of the global population does not eat enough omega-3 fatty acids or not getting enough omega-3 fatty acids from seafood. Um, this is a, this, There was a Harvard study that was published a few years back that identified the top six preventable causes of death. So in other words, things that are pretty preventable that will have a dramatic effect on your life expectancy. And there were things like avoiding hypertension, avoiding type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease, not smoking, right? Low omega-3 intake from seafood was on that top six list, along with the things I just mentioned. Uh, There are three omega-3 fatty acids. The ones that are found in seafood are EPA and DHA. Those are the ones found in the marine sources. ALA is the plant source of omega-3. That was not part of the the equation here in in terms of the one one of the top six preventable causes of death. And like I said, most people are not eating enough seafood. They're not supplementing with omega-3. You can measure your omega-3 levels. The way to do that would be an omega-3 index test. You want to measure your omega-3 levels in red blood cells. That's because red blood cells take about 120 days to turn over. So they're more of a long-term marker of omega-3 versus just your plasma phospholipid. So omega-3 index test is a a really good way to measure omega-3 levels. It was pioneered by Bill Harris and um, one of his colleagues uh, many years ago. And I think it was back in 2004, about 20 years ago. And um, they identified what's called the omega-3 index, high omega-3 index and a low omega-3 index. The high omega-3 index is like 8% or more, and the low omega-3 index is 4% or lower. And what they've, one of their first publications, what they found was that people with a high omega-3 index of 8% or more had a 90% lower risk of sudden cardiac death like 90% lower risk. That means like if you're having a heart attack, which happens like every 30 seconds in the United States, you're 90% less likely to die from that heart attack if you had a high omega-3 index. And you're also less likely to actually experience the heart attack. Um, Since then, Bill and his colleagues have published many different studies looking at different cohorts, whether it's the Framingham cohort or UK Biobank data, lots and lots of big cohort data out there. And I think the the message is clear. So people with a high omega-3 index have about a five-year increased life expectancy compared to people with a low omega-3 index. And this is after correcting for all these confounding variables. Um, we know that actually, if you, th- if, you, if you think about the average seafood intake in the U.S. versus Japan, we know it's much higher in Japan. So in Japan, their omega-3 index is about 10, very high. In the U.S., our average omega-3 index is about 5, 5%. So we're on that like low, low end. And Japan, they have about a five-year increased life expectancy than people in the U.S., on both the male and female side. Um, within this Framingham data, what was so interesting to me was that, you know, Bill and his colleagues had plotted, they'd looked at the omega-3 index, and then they, they looked at smokers versus non-smokers. And this is where it to me is so clear because we know that smoking, one of the worst things you can do for your cardiovascular health and your heart is to smoke. Most people think about lung cancer. Forget lung cancer. That increase happens in a linear fashion, right? Your your lung cancer risk goes up like decades later. Cardiovascular disease happens like pretty quick. Um, smoking is really bad for your heart. And we know that omega-3s are actually really good for your heart. And so if, if, we, if you look at the data here, and I like people to kind of look at the, the slide, the green curve is the life expectancy curve, the green one. Those are non-smokers with a high omega-3 index. If you look at the red curve, people with the lowest life expectancy, those were smokers with a low omega-3 index, right? Big surprise. But what the biggest surprise to me was that if you look at the orange and blue, they're pretty much perfectly overlaid. I mean, I can't imagine anything being more overlaid and more perfectly matching. 
Smokers with a high omega-3 index have the same life expectancy as non-smokers with a low omega-3 index. So in other words, not getting enough omega-3 was like smoking for life expectancy. And that is just something that I think people should think about. I mean, obviously, like smokers are like jumping up and down because they're like, I can take a fish oil supplement and have the same, you know, be healthy. Um, But really, I think what we should be thinking about is that we're not eating enough seafood or supplementing with a high quality fish oil supplement to get our omega-3 index to that 8% range. And we'll talk about what it takes to get there. But I think even stronger data, uh, we can turn to some of the large randomized controlled trials looking at supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids, whether it's the SEPA, which is the purified EPA form and the Reduce It trial where people were given, I mean, we're talking large, large um, populations of people were given four grams a day for, was it two, five years? And their cardiovascular disease risk and the risk of having a cardiovascular event, whether that was a heart attack or a stroke, that was reduced by 25% compared to placebo. And then there was the strength study um, that was actually stopped early because there was no benefit. And the form that they were given these individuals was a free fatty acid form. So it wasn't a sterified to anything, which can be very irritating on the gut. And then there was the vital study. And this study, people were given a kind of a low dose, in my opinion. They were given about 840 milligrams of Leveza, that's DHA and EPA combined. And and this was also a five-year study. And the secondary outcomes, when you look at the secondary outcomes, the, 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 there was a reduced heart attack risk by almost 30%. Total coronary heart disease was, was reduced by 17%. Um, and particularly people, this was happening in people that were having a low fish intake. So we have, I think, a lot of evidence that Omega-3 is very important for cardiovascular health, and it doesn't take a lot of omega-3. In fact, it only takes about 1.5 to 2 grams of a fish oil supplement per day to get someone from a low omega-3 index to a high omega-3 index. It's very achievable. 